I'm Glenn Whitman. I'm a new media consultant. And I'm Robert Cipetta. We use our science advisors in two ways. One is they'll find some interesting scientific principle. The other way is we'll say, we want to do this, go justify it scientifically. A lot of what's in our pilot and what you will see over the course of the series is extremely strange and bizarre. It's all based in some degree of reality. There are times at which an entire episode will be born out of some interesting article. And then there are other times that episodes will start with an emotional story that's in search of the fringy science that's going to make it cooler, going to make it specifically an episode of our show. Ultimately, it's a fantasy to some degree, but there's always some degree of truth. You will hopefully turn off your television and, and wonder if what you've just seen is possible. A woman pregnant to term was found alone outside the hospital. She's a Jane Doe. Did the baby survive? The newborn was convulsing, screaming in obvious pain. It was growing before their eyes. The rapid aging that the serial killer was attempting to offset, the idea that the government had created rapid aging to grow soldiers to their peak physical performance in six years. You know, that's based on an actual disease that rapidly ages you. Advanced rapid aging, like the disease called progeria, can be induced artificially. There's a disease that causes children to look like they're very, very old. And so Walter mentions this disease just in passing. Well, actually, those children aren't really aging fast. It's a different kind of syndrome that's going on, which we knew. But the point was to make sure that something was mentioned that people would actually have heard of. And as a result of that, it makes it seem just a little bit more real to people. The idea that the final image seen by a dead person could be imprinted onto their retina is an idea that's been around as long as Jules Verne, if not before then. There was a scientist who, at some point many decades ago, was able to recover an image seen by a rabbit after death as a result of treating the rabbit's eyeball with some kind of a bromide solution. When you look at the sun or, or any scene, bright scene, when you close your eyes, that scene appears in your eye kind of upside down sometimes, a refracted image. It's it, retention of images, it's called. It's one of the reasons motion pictures work. Uh, this is the same theory is based upon this. It has arrived. To some extent, this is an episode that's meant to go beyond the science that even our incredibly brilliant people on the show know about. You know, you know what it is, don't you? Why is, Why is it, here? it here? Why now? Scientists and the medical community, they are using MRIs, which exist, to read people's thoughts, brainwave patterns, and try to deduce from that what they're thinking about. And they've even found that they can predict some actions that people will take seconds before the person actually has the subjective experience of deciding to make that decision and then taking the action. The man in the woods, he knew me. And I don't know how, but he was inside my head. He knew what I was going to say before I said it. The latest theories of science in terms of, you know, quantum theory and all that stuff is very much based on the observer and how an observer can change the reality of something. So the observer kind of started off as a sort of a scientific principle and then it actually got narrowed down into actually being a person. In Power Hungry, we talked about the idea of a computer virus being able to jump to humans. And through needing that idea over and over again, we sort of came up with the idea of a character, Joseph, who would start waking up to this power of his to be able to actually control electronic or computer-driven devices. Listen, they, 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 what's the matter with they you? They put me under some hypnosis, I don't know, and they, they, they said they were going to uh, realign the electrical impulses of my brain. It is true that human beings, as a result of the electrical activity in our brains, we do all have a very, very weak uh, magnetic field around our heads, and, and that's in part what is sensed by an EEG. So the notion was, how can you amplify that? What science has made you, Joseph? You are special. <laughs> Essentially what's going on here is this girl has got a kind of radioactive process going on inside her which releases intense bursts of microwave energy. Imagine an egg or a papaya or a mango in your microwave spinning round and round at high voltage. What happens? Dang! It just explodes. And that's sadly what happens to our young lady's head. JJ wanted to have someone's head explode in the teaser. The ailment that she had, Bellini's lymphosemia, we wanted an autoimmune disease. But we needed one that did specifically what we wanted it to do, which was, you know, when you mix that autoimmune disease with a specific cocktail of drugs, you become a human bomb. Powering up. Three, two, one. 
charge. In SAFE, episode 10, the idea that phasing through a wall is actually sort of a theoretical concept that physicists have been talking about for a number of years. And the idea is that solid matter is actually mostly just empty space. And the reason that you can't go through a wall is that the atoms in that wall have created a force field that as you push against it, they push back against you as much as you're pushing. So here the idea was that our bad guys has used the equation that uh, they found out in the episode 108 how to phase through a wall, how to push the atoms apart and slip past the atoms into the safe. This idea that a virus could rewrite your genetic code is not actually that far out of the box. Obviously, we've taken it to an extreme place, but there are viruses called retroviruses that actually operate by taking their own DNA and literally inserting it into the DNA of the host, meaning you. In fact, this has been used in a variety of genetic therapies. In particular, I remember reading an article just recently about how scientists have been able to use a virus to insert a gene into the retinal cells of people with a certain genetic form of blindness and actually be able to restore some of their sight through the use of this virus. Walter, is that what you're going to use to read the boy's thoughts? Not to read them, my dear. To listen to them. Time magazine in this past year ran an article about the United States Army trying to build helmets for soldiers that would allow them to directly communicate with those soldiers so that the soldier just thinks something and the commander can hear what they're thinking or transmit orders to soldiers out in the field. Think of it as creating artificial vocal cords. Right now, they're working on devices that are able to read your thoughts. He may also be sensitive to people's emotions. So are you saying that he's psychic? No, no, more a shark. There are, in fact, animals like sharks and rays which have a kind of electromagnetic sense, which allow them to kind of communicate with each other in a nonverbal way uh, and to bring out or stimulate certain uh, behaviors in other members of their species. You told me you didn't open that door in there. Yeah, you bet I did. Get out. Now, all of you, get you out. You should be arrested. Experimenting on animals is a crime. Somebody shut her up. Go. Let's go, let's go, go. We love the episode Unleashed because in many ways that episode went back to some of the developments that have been taking place in science that were part of the inspiration for the show to begin with. In particular, transgenics, the notion that you could have organisms with genes from other species. That's science now. That is the reality. And in fact, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry last year went to three chemists who were able to isolate a gene from a glowing jellyfish. And this glowing jellyfish gene has been inserted in a variety of other animals. And it's been used in part for things like Huntington's disease research. For those of you just joining us, what you're looking at is the work of ZFT terrorist organization responsible for at least a half a dozen biological attacks over the last several months. Everything we know thus far can be found in your packets, including a copy of their manifesto, which elucidates their ideology and their methods. Destruction by the advancement of technology. And the road not taken, again, we were posed with trying to find a new and gruesome way to blow people up. They wanted to do pyrokinesis. They wanted to have someone spontaneously combust and burn up. So this is where we sort of leaned back into some of our mythology and came up with the idea that maybe something this person had been injected with as a child was coming back to haunt them. But the notion is some kind of a medical treatment that they were given allowed their brain to command vibrations that would take place. And it really is true that essentially what heat is is vibration. So if your brain could cause some kind of a bright vibration to take place, eventually you could uh, create enough heat to even create a flame. And if you haven't yet mastered pyrokinesis and the ability to excite molecules that are outside your body, well then you're going to excite the ones inside your body and you're going to blow up, sadly. I posited in 1976 that it is possible to synchronize the fields of two distinct minds to allow the sharing of information across the unconscious state. We only want to tell things that have, at the very least, a large kernel of truth in them. Science right now is so beyond even our wildest imaginations that they'll pitch us stuff and we'll go, come on, nobody would believe that. And so we've actually found it quite easy to ground our craziest theories in, in hard science. 